For this last section on blood spatter, there really isn't a lot of notes. Uh, instead, what I would like you to do is to watch the video clips and to get a feel for what these different types of spatter look like. You also got to investigate them in class with lab number three, uh, looking at what the velocity does to the appearance of the blood spatter stains. Right, now, the first type, low velocity, uh, is when blood is under just the force of gravity. Uh, so this is when you're drip, uh, dripping blood or casting off or arterial spurting. Um, now, you got a chance to do this in class when you did the different walking tests. So you had a slow pace and a fast pace. These blood uh, droplets should look pretty large uh, compared to some of the other types of spatter. Okay, so this is just blood falling through the air. Right now for drips, this is uh, you know drops of blood uh, falling you know directly down, perhaps into wet blood. Um, you might have a large central stain uh, and a couple of other blood droplets uh, around it. So let's take a look at what this looks like. Now my name is Steve Schlebe, and I'm a criminalist with a local law enforcement agency. Oftentimes it seems we will see blood dropping into blood. To demonstrate what, what it looks like uh, when we have blood dropping into blood, we'll do that on a, a board like this. First one onto the board, followed by uh, several others. Blood drops into blood, and uh, the subsequent secondary or satellite kind of uh, droplets occur as a result of that. Not only on, say, a flat surface around the blood pool where blood is dropping into blood, say on the floor, but on vertical surfaces that might be nearby that will get small droplets uh, um, and deposited on, on that vertical surface. Messy work, all that blood on the walls looks like a finger painting. The second type would be a cast off from a weapon. Um, so, you know, whatever weapon you use, uh, you know, a knife or, you know, a baseball bat, uh, the first strike would cause bleeding. Uh, and then as the person is, uh, you know, harmed further, the blood would fly off of the weapon uh, as the person swings it. And so let's take a look at this blood spatter. With cast off stains, we're dealing with a situation where there's blood on an object and that object is being swung through space and the blood is flying off of that object, striking walls, people, floors, whatever happened to be in the way. You can see in cast off stains, the stains tend to appear in linear patterns as a result of the arcing strike, in this case with the crowbar. Nice sharp slices through the body, no splashes, no drips, clean and easy. Arterial spurts uh, occur when the uh, blood exits the body under arterial pressure and then falls to the ground. Uh, and what you're going to see is large stains are going to have a downward flow uh, on walls, and they're going to form this waveform, or like it, it was like it was pulsing. Um, so, for example, we have a strong uh, blood. Uh, you know, group here, it you know, wanes off a little bit, strong again, wanes off, strong again. All right, each of these uh, arcs here is when the blood was being pushed out of the, uh, you know, artery. So uh, let's take a look at this type of spatter, and then we also have a crime scene photo to look at. Arterial spurting is where um, an, an artery is breached or broken by some wound. Blood is leaving under pressure, and we're going to try and demonstrate that by using the turkey baster. Since the heart is a very strong pump, it's going to push the blood out through that breach under tremendous force. That kind of blood deposition creates a kind of a rather distinctive blood pattern uh, when that blood strikes, uh, say, a vertical surface like a, like a wall at a crime scene. The killer plunged his knife into the shoulder, severing the carotid artery and... Take a look at an actual crime scene. Uh, arterial spurts have a lot of blood associated with them, usually. Um, so you can see that it has a strong downward flow. There's quite a lot of blood, and it has this pulsating form. Uh, so this would be an arterial spurt. Uh, this particular uh, crime scene, unfortunately, was somebody 
um, had cut their own throat. And now for medium velocity spatter uh, in class, this is when you, uh, we saw the demonstration of someone hitting the block of wood, uh, you know, with the hammer and it splattered onto the walls. So usually these droplets are um, a medium size uh, and it comes from usually a weapon such as a baseball bat. Okay, so these have some sort of force associated with them. If you're high velocity blood spatter, right, this is uh, blood that is uh, subjected to an extreme uh, force. So, you know, for example, um, you know, a gunshot wound. And it produces a very fine uh, spray, and you saw that uh, in the lab number three. Okay, for gunshot wounds in particular, right, not only do you get this fine, misty spray, but you can also get some uh, back spatter, um, you know, potentially onto a weapon or onto the assailant. Uh, so, for example, when the uh, bullet enters the person, you get some blood fly, uh, flying out of the entry wound and then most of the blood coming out of the exit wound. So you actually have this butterfly pattern uh, for gunshot wounds. Okay, so you get a strong directional blood in one direction right, and then some back spatter in the other direction. So you get this butterfly or V uh, effect. So another type of blood spatter is a white pattern. Uh, this is when an object moves through a wet blood stain uh, and you get something called a feathered edge. And we'll take a look at this uh, in this video clip. Swipes and wipes are, are terms that are used to describe ways in which blood is put onto a surface. Wipe occurs when something that is not blood stained wipes through an already existing blood stain. A swipe occurs when a bloody object being uh, moved along and across an unbloody surface. Now transferred patterns are when uh, an object that has blood on it contacts another surface. Okay, um, so for example, you know, somebody had blood on their hands, or they have blood on their shoes, uh, and then they walk somewhere else and left like bloody handprints uh, or, you know, bloody shoe prints uh, on a surface. So it produces an image of that object. Sometimes that could be used to tell what object was used, uh, you know, direction the assailant was traveling through the house, uh, you know, a lot of different information. So let's take a look at this type of blood spattered. Transfer patterns occur when something bloody is placed on a surface and some form or recognizable shape or pattern is produced as a result of the blood going onto that surface from that item. When bloody objects uh, contact surfaces that are unstained, the blood is transferred over onto that surface. And what we see very often is the shape or form of the item that is uh, bloody. Now what? Now I eat.